Hello and welcome to the Shiki Science Show, where in this video we're going to talk about the gut microbiome and whether it can influence the functional outcome of cancer mutations. So to be a bit more specific, we're going to talk about this recent Nature publication, The Gut Microbiomes, which is mutants P53 from tumor suppressive to oncogenic. So we'll begin the video by talking about P53 and what it means by mutants P53 and what the terms tumor suppressive and oncogenic actually mean. And then we'll talk about the gut microbiome and its localization within the intestine, just highlighting a bit about the structure of the intestine as well, as that will become really useful for when we then look at what they found in this study. And I'll conclude with my thoughts and opinions and the, I guess, the overarching takeaways from this research paper. So let's begin with P53. So P53 is interesting to me because it's actually the protein that I'm studying as part of my PhD project. And I like to think of it as a pretty famous protein. The reason I say this is because it's a very highly studied protein. And one of the reasons for that is that P53 is the most commonly mutated gene in human cancer. And so P53 is commonly referred to as a tumor suppressor. And this is based on the fact that the protein gets activated in response to a variety of different stresses. And P53 can then act as a transcription factor to activate different genes and different responses to kind of resolve the stress or to commit the cell to cell death or to cellular senescence. And then these responses are thought to prevent the cell from becoming cancerous and to keep replicating in a damaged or stressed state. So what happens then when P53 gets mutated? Well, a lot of these mutations only change one amino acid within the protein. So the structure of the protein pretty much remains intact, but it has three potentially different consequences. The first of which is referred to as loss of function, whereby the mutated P53 protein fails to activate the target genes of the wild type, the normally functional P53, that are critical for the control of homeostasis. The second type is referred to as dominant negative effect. And so what happens here is that the mutated protein might interact with a wild type copy and prevent the action of the wild type protein. And the last potential consequence is referred to as gainer function, whereby these mutated P53 proteins do something different that wasn't seen before. And so either by losing functions or by gaining new functions, this mutated P53 protein is thought to be able to drive tumorigenesis. And so as I mentioned, mutant P53 is common in human cancers. And one of these cancers is intestinal cancers. And so the intestines are long continuous tubes and are where most of the absorption of nutrients and water happens. So most of the nutrients are absorbed in the small intestine, which is directly connected to the stomach. And then from the small intestine, it passes into the large intestine, commonly referred to as just the colon. And this is where more of the water is absorbed. But the colon is also where there's a greater density of your gut microbiome. And so the gut microbiome refers to the microorganisms that colonize the gut. And as I just mentioned, they're more abundant within the distal regions of the gut, which is your colon. And there's a continuous crosstalk between the the microbiome and the human host cells. And this is mainly mediated by the fact that these gut microbiome are playing a really important role in breaking down different dietary fibres within your diet. And this can be used to produce different metabolites that can then be useful for, for maintaining tissue homeostasis. And this is further reinforced by the fact that perturbations of the gut microbiome composition has shown to be associated with various different diseases, including obesity, inflammation, and relevant for this video, cancer. So what were the authors of the study trying to achieve? Well, they were interested in understanding how mutant P53 plays a role in driving the formation of Wnt-driven intestinal cancers. And so Wnt is a referred to as Wnt signaling is a signaling pathway that promotes growth and is commonly upregulated within cancer, in particular cancers of the intestine. And these cancers are typically driven by the deletion of either the gene casein kinase one alpha or by mutations within the APC gene. And so by using a mouse model whereby either of these genes were mutated within the gut, the authors could try and explore the impact of having mutant P53 presence as well to see if it really does 
drive further tumorigenesis. But the really interesting finding that they report was that there seemed to be a dichotomous effect of the presence of mutant p53. And so they found that the mutant p53 enhanced tumorigenesis in the distal gut, so the colon, but it seemed to actually counteract tumorigenesis and show tumor suppressive functions like the wild type p53 protein in the proximal gut, so regions of the small intestine. And so this is really astounding because we have the same protein with the same mutation having different functions in different regions of the intestine. And so this really reinforces the context dependency of different mutations. But it raises the question of why. Why and how is this happening? So the authors wanted to explore this further and they found that the mutant p53 was actually blocking the Wnt pathway in the small intestine. But then why was it not blocking it in the large intestine as well? And so obviously there are a lot of differences between the small intestine and the colon, the large intestine. But a major difference is the abundance of the gut microbiome, which the authors hypothesized could be playing a role in the effect that they were seeing. So how can you study this? Well, what they did was they treated the mice with antibiotics that actually eradicate the majority of the gut microbiome. And then what they saw was by eradicating the gut microbiome, the homeostasis of the colon improved greatly. And so by removing the gut microbiome, it seemed to alleviate this oncogenic function of mutant p53 within the colon. So the gut microbiome is arguably playing really important roles within our body. So learning about its removal and having a beneficial impact on tumorigenesis is quite concerning. So what part of the gut microbiome was actually causing this effect? Well, the gut microbiome are known to produce a variety of different metabolites. And by analysing these different metabolites, the authors found that polyphenols, and in particular gallic acid, seemed to be responsible for converting the tumor suppressive mutant P53 into this more oncogenic P53 seen in the colon. And so I've cut a lot of their results really short, but I think the study is really interesting because it raises a lot of really interesting questions. Firstly, it leaves us on a little bit of a cliffhanger because it's still unclear what the actual mechanism of mediating this switch between a tumor suppressive to an oncogenic mutant p53 is. We know from this study that gallic acid seems to be responsible, but is gallic acid interacting with p53? Is it interacting with other molecules? Is it interacting with other immune cells that can then have a secondary indirect impact on the intestinal cells. Secondly, how does it impact our view of what mutant p53 is doing in cells? Initially, mutant p53 has been viewed as a loss of function or gain of function in terms of gaining oncogenic properties which drive tumorigenesis. This study seems to show that actually mutant p53 could be beneficial in certain contexts. And so I like the way that this lab, if you go into their Twitter thread, they have this quite entertaining image that shows the Dr. Jackal and Mr. Hyde's analogy for the two different versions of mutant p53. But joking aside, understanding when mutant p53 could be beneficial or tumorigenic is important for understanding cancer evolution. And I think this is definitely, if you know, if these results are true, it's definitely a paradigm shift in understanding what mutant p53 is capable of. And it's also reinforces in the study how important it is to take into account the gut microbiome into studies of cancer, but not just cancer, other diseases as well. And what I haven't mentioned is obviously these studies were done in mice, but the presence of gallic acid is also seen in humans and they're derived from two different bacterial strains, Lactobacillus plantarum and Bacillus subtilis. And so understanding gallic acid and its involvement in this um, switch in mutant p53 properties could also have therapeutic potential in terms of identifying drugs that could potentially inhibit the enzymes within these bacterial species that enable the production of gallic acid. And it might also be the explanation for why cancer of the small intestine is far less prevalent than in the colon. So given that I'm researching p53 and also have interest in the gut microbiome, just as my own interests, 
I thought this paper was really fascinating to read and I'm going to have to reread it probably a couple of times again to fully explore all of the data that they got. Um, so hopefully I've been able to explain what I can of this paper to you and hope you have learned something. And as always, thanks for listening.